I'll talk to you about three things that we can learn about the dying thief. There's a lot of heretics out there that are trying to use the dying thief to disprove vital Bible doctrine. And we're going to go over some of these arguments that they use real quickly here. But I'm going to show you three things that you can learn from the dying thief. Number one, we can see repentance. Because they'll say, heretics out there, they'll say, there was no repentance there. All he did was just believe in Jesus. There was not any kind of repentance. That's a lie. Luke chapter 23 Verse 39, And one of the mal malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man, man hath done nothing amiss. He looks at himself and he says, He's hanging there on a cross. He hasn't been whipped like Jesus has been whipped, but he's dying, hanging on a cross in the same kind of pain that Jesus is in without the thing of being whipped, you know, and having the crown of thorns jammed into his head. And he's laying, he's, he's hanging there and he's saying, we deserve it. We're, we're getting this thing. We deserve it. But he didn't do anything wrong. See, that's the attitude of somebody that truly comes to the Lord for salvation. I deserve hell. I deserve death. Jesus Christ doesn't, he shouldn't have to have had to pay for my sins. That's not fair. That's, that's, you know, I can't believe he would actually die for me. Sometimes somebody as wicked as me. You see, repentance. Was there any self-righteousness with that man, that dying thief here in Luke chapter 23? Is there any self-righteousness? No. He's there. He's stripped just like Jesus Christ is. He's being humiliated just like Jesus Christ is. He's feeling the pain of dying on the cross just like Jesus Christ is. And he says, I deserve it. He doesn't. You see, that's the mark of true, somebody that has truly come to the Lord for salvation. I deserve hell. I deserve death. I deserve sickness. I deserve to have my finances you know, gone and whatever else. I deserve to have bad relations. I deserve, I deserve all the worst of everything. And Jesus Christ, Him taking my sin on Him on the cross, what an amazing sacrifice. Wow. He doesn't deserve it. He didn't do anything wrong. I did. Repentance. So, to these wicked devils out there that try to say, well, there was just belief. There's just belief there. There's no repentance. Uh, you can't read plain English. Secondly, what did he say to Jesus Christ? Verse 42, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Lord equals God. You see, the only people that ever called Jesus Christ Lord were the common people and things like that. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, they never called Jesus Lord. Why? Because that's why they crucified him. Because he was saying that he is God. God Almighty. God the Father, in other words. Okay? In him to all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Bible says back in the book of Colossians. Jesus Christ was Lord. He is Lord and will always be Lord. But there are a lot of wicked people out there that say, oh, I don't believe he's totally Lord. He's not God the Father. See? No, you see, you have to believe that he is God. Notice that the thief did not say, uh, and he said unto Jesus, I put my faith in your death, burial, and resurrection. Well, Jesus is in the process of dying, but he wasn't buried yet. The, the dying thief never got to see Jesus buried. He never lived long enough to see Jesus come up from the dead. The dying thief didn't say, hey, I, I see the blood that you're shedding, and I know that that's there to wash my sins away. He says, Lord, Lord, he confesses that he's God. Completely, 100%. God. That's what the Pharisees hated. That's what they didn't want people to think. 
homeless Jewish carpenter walking around as God manifest in the flesh? You see? What's the third thing that we can learn from the dying thief? A changed changed life that accompanies a true born again experience. When God saves you, truly saves you, your life will change. You say, well, how's that possible? Let's see here. Verse 43, we'll just keep reading, we'll finish the passage here. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness, was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Okay? Uh... Looking down through here, I think it's actually over in the book of John. We'll go over to John. Go over to John chapter. I gotta find the verse here. Okay, John chapter 19. And we'll begin in verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the, and of the other, which was crucified with him. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. Okay. Um, the guy didn't die right away. This thief, this dying thief, he lived for a little while later after saying, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He lived for a little while. He suffered a little while longer after Jesus gave up the ghost. Do you think his life changed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's no longer looking and saying, I'm going to die here and I don't know where I'm going to go and whatever else. He just spoke to God, calling him Lord and saying, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord says right before he dies, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. All of a sudden that pain probably wasn't as bad anymore. All of a sudden he realized his destination was fixed. Yes, his life did change. I'm sure it was quite humiliating being there on that cross. But you know what? Things changed for him. His destination changed. You see? So be very careful when you hear people trying to use the dying thief as a way to get away from true biblical salvations. salvation. Repentance must be there. If somebody's going to get saved, there has to be repentance. They have to turn from their self-righteousness. You cannot be self-righteous and saved. It cannot happen. Your righteousness must come from Jesus Christ. His righteousness is imputed to you. You have to look at yourself as a sinner and say, I am worthy of hell. I am worthy of death. And you look to Jesus Christ for salvation and you say, God, please save me. You call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Please, I'm unworthy. Please have mercy on me. Anybody that tells you differently is a hell-bound sinner guarantee it. They're self-righteous. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to bring themselves down to the point where they're calling out to God and saying, please save me. It's too much for their pride, you see. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, 100% completely God, you're not going to be saved. And if you can't prove that light, your life changed after your supposed salvation, if you can't prove that God has supernaturally moved into your life and changed things, then you're not saved. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's just, you don't believe that? Well, sorry. Do you understand, viewer, this is the most important thing. Salvation is the most important thing. You get it wrong, you go to hell, and you burn for all of eternity. It's not something you just go, yeah, well, you know, okay, he died on the cross. Okay, I believe that, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go on about my life. 
You better be concerned. You better want to see some proof in your life that things changed, that something happened, that your salvation is real. Because if you mess it up because you're listening to a bunch of false lying prophets out there, if you mess up on salvation, you go to hell and you burn forever. There's not going to be anything down there to say, well, you know, there's a guy over there that lied to me. I watched his video. He told me I could just believe. I didn't have to ask. I didn't have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. I'm going to go over and punch him in the face. What's that going to do? You're there with him in hell for all of eternity. You better take a lesson from the dying thief. I deserved to be here. Jesus Christ doesn't deserve the death that he's getting. He's innocent. But I, I deserve death. I deserve hell. There's nothing in me that's good. It's all Jesus. Lord, God, please save me. He didn't just look over at Jesus and go, okay, I believe it. Yeah, I believe he's Lord. He calls over to him and he says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He called upon the name of the Lord. And it changed his life. He didn't have to live very long after the Lord said to him, you're going to be with me today in paradise. He didn't have to live very long. But there was that pain. Soldiers came over. How do you think it felt to have your legs broken? You're supporting yourself. You got your, your like this on this cross and you're dying. You have to pull yourself up occasionally. All oh, the pain of it. You know, like this. And all of a sudden here comes the soldiers and they, and they snap your legs and, and you have nothing to support you anymore. And it, I forget all the medical things about it, but it pulls your lungs up and, and basically suffocates you. But that dying thief, as he's taken his last few breaths, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He had an assurance of salvation. Do you?